Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you in the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast from Hype. This is episode 65. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. This H Y M P E is Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Shouts out to my man. This is his second appearance on the podcast, part two. Introduce yourself to the audience. What's up? It's um, Boy Count Rock, Life Coach Rock. I am underscore Coach Rock on, on IG, YouTube channel, and Welcome Home Rock. What's up? That's you. You want to introduce yourself to the audience? Uh, yeah, I was um, uh, introduced Q U D D U C E X on Instagram. All right. <laughs> Copy that. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, both is both sides of the wall. Part two. Both sides of the wall. Part two. This is the kids' perspective. But you know we got to hit the rundown first. Custom hustle. Custom hustle is my clothing line. That is at Custom Hustle World on Instagram and Twitter. They go to damn house phone. Y'all already know what it is. Custom Hustle World on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Jack Custom Jackets, jerseys, T-shirts. We just got the basketball jerseys in. We now got the baby jerseys, the baby jackets. However you need that thing customized, we got you. H2H Cleaning. H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. You follow that at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. It's a tri-state area situation, but if you make it worth my while, I will slide. Uh, special shout out to my girls, though, out in Detroit, the What Up Doe podcast. Shouts out to What Up Doe. They doing a live show on July the 16th, I believe it is. Get with my girls at the link in the bio. Purchase them tickets. All right. Uh, E-Block Radio. E-Block Radio Network every Monday, 2 p.m. on the E-Block Radio Network. GFT Radio every Tuesday, 2 p.m. Uh, Wednesday is 216 to blend, 216 to blend at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Then Thursday is WTNUPhilly.com at 1230. Friday is the I Say Podcast Radio Network at 10 a.m. All right, y'all. Episode 65, Both Sides of the Wall, part two. This is one is about the kids. What did y'all, how do y'all feel about the situation with your dad being in jail? Walk us through that as far as how did that affect you and all growing up without your dad? Well, not without your dad, but him not physically being able to be there. It, it was it was kind of it was it was kind of hard because some like some things that your dad usually teach you he couldn't because like playing basketball some people like I quit playing basketball because I didn't have like the motivation and all that but he probably was he probably gave me motivation to keep playing and all that you know what I'm saying my bad hold up let the audience know how old you are first I'm six it must be sixteen June copy that. So you said, yeah, him not physically being there trying to get you to work on your left hand and teaching you how to dribble and teaching you how to do all of that. That was more so a problem for that specific aspect of your life. Yeah. What would you say was the hardest thing about uh, him not being there? Because, like, I know with me and Rock did part one, he talked about his uh, support system was always strong. Now, was that the support system was strong for you, or was the support system like, did you have an uncle or somebody that you could lean on? But it, obviously, it's not the same as your dad. But did you have somebody in there standing in for him? Well, I, I I did, but it still it wasn't the same because like Father's Day, birthdays, st- stuff like that. He still like Father's Day and birthday. It was hard. Like having to tell your dad happy father's day through the phone. Sometimes you can't even talk to him whenever you want to and all that. You see, the reason why I ask that is one of my brothers goes to jail and tells me at the time, I think his son is like seven. And he tells me, I need you to just take care of him. If you do anything for me, that's a plus. But you, I need you to be on him. He needs you to come to a game. It's whatever. He needs some cleats. It's whatever. He acting up in school. It's whatever. But even in me and him would have different conversations and he would say, like, I just want my dad. Now, obviously, me being there to help him out with whatever, it's not exactly the same. So now, Rock, you talk to yeah. us about receiving those happy Father's Days and those birthdays and those things. Like he said, I'm trying to play ball and I'm getting discouraged because you're not there to put it to put me through it. Um, for, from my perspective, it's the understanding of, like, those things are happening. Like, your sons are out there and they're not able to experience you there to witness them. You feel what I'm saying? Or mm-hmm. being able to get inspired by them or wake them up in the morning and say, look, you said you wanted to play basketball, get up and 
go ahead and dribble or go ahead and do school and things like that. So with me, it was the understanding of knowing that I'm not able to out there to do that for them and being able to overcome the guilt of that. You know what I mean? So since being since coming home, it's like we we we've been learning each other. You know what I'm saying? All of us been learning each other. And for the most part, it's been it been great. That's when we like me and Caduce, it, our relationship is great. We we like you are really bonded and building, you know what I'm saying? And me being away from him for so long, you know what I mean, with well, his whole life basically. You know what I mean? It's like I know him from a, I know him from a, a certain level, but and he know me from a certain level, but it's really don't go beyond the visiting room, a visit or a phone call. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So man, uh, which is completely different. Yeah. Because them conversations can really only be surface level conversations. Even when you slide up on a visit, the visit might be four or five hours, but we can't really have too much of an in depth conversation just because of the fact that it's probably four or five of us here on the visit. Everybody kind of yeah. want to get the little couple of seconds with you if you at the joint where we could walk to the microwave that's a major joint for the visit yeah Some joints won't even let you up to do all of that so like yeah i know i know how all this work um yeah now all right so tell me about this one yeah like, yeah, like i was asking about all right so you even trying to send your man in there or whatever like walk me walk us through that part calling and saying like yo i need you to go down to my son got a game or my son got suspended or he having a problem with this, that, or whatever. Yeah. Walk See, the thing about that, that is like... Walk us, through the, walk us through that process from your perspective, too. Yeah, the thing about that, like, with me, is, it was like, a lot of my dudes that was home, whatever, they had their own family. They got their own kids. I got a brother that got his own kids, his own family. And one thing that I'm learning about family is, your family is the family that you build. You know what I mean? And your brother's family, and they, they they like extended family. Once you begin to build your own family, everybody else become extended family. And it may not sound like that, or but action show. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you can't get mad at that, especially for me being booked. Like, if I see my homie, like, I got one homie, man, I love the way he raised his kids. You know what I mean? If I, if I call him right now, he probably out. Master shooting somewhere with his son playing AAU. You know what I'm saying? But he's been like that my whole bit with his kids. Or I might want my, my one man, his, his um, which is happy to be Caduce and them first cousin, their mom had passed away. You know what I mean? Which is Caduce aunt. And he, they got a son and he raised, he raised his son. You know what I mean? So it's like the dudes that I mess with, it's like, I can ask them, yo, I need you to do this for my kids or do this for my son, but they don't really even have the time because they so much focused on their own kids. So it's like, all right, just taking the, rea is, the reality, you got to take your back seat until I come home. Is that something that you realized when you got home or is that something that you realized in there? Because the thing about inside there, like we talked about this on part one, where you were like, you be so selfish because all you got is you. All you got to worry about is you. You don't even be thinking about the 50, 60, 70 other things that this person you calling and asking them to do that is doing. Yeah, I think with me and there, it was more so of, I knew that my dudes had my back. You know what I mean? So it was never certain dudes. I knew that certain dudes is like, if he could do something, he's going to do it. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But certain dudes that I expected to do things that didn't do things, it did grow bitter. Like, dang, you feel what I'm saying? And I feel like, it's certain, I feel like there's still certain things that people can do. You know what I mean? Like, for instance, I mean, you like nobody never bought my son a pack of pencils. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, all right, it's certain things that you can do for your homies that's locked up for his kids. You might not be able to make the basketball games, but you grab him a basketball. You feel what I'm saying? You might not be able to do certain things, but it's just certain things that you can do because this is the life that we said we 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 gonna commit ourselves to, so it, I feel like it's two sides to that life. I feel like it's the loyalty is just not going to take the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying loyalty is like, all right, I'm gonna do anything I could possibly do so his son don't have to go through a rough situation as much as possible. And in that situation, that's, that's I why I think. And in that situation, I think that's why my brother said to me, "Just take care of my son and don't even worry about me." If you do yeah. anything for me, it's a plus because it's going to be hard enough for him as it is that yeah. I need somebody that I can trust to be there for him. 
All right, because yeah, the last thing you want your kids to be in a situation. All right, now Deuce, tell me this: what, did, did you feel like any type of resentment towards your dad because he wasn't there? Was you like mad at him, or how long did it take you to get? I know you was mad at him, so let's even scratch that. How long did it take you to get over being mad at him? After a while, I just started realizing like it, hey, like, wait, some things happen for a reason. Uh, it probably took me like a couple months, like to get over the fact that he was locked up and couldn't do nothing, cause he's locked up for me and my brothers. What you mean a couple months? Cause you was only one when he went down. He was like a couple months old, wasn't you? I'm, I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying like a couple months, like like, like I'm ten years old. I started okay. realizing my dad really locked up. All right, so in that, did you, so how much, like I said, did you have any resentment towards him or like, was it on the like, I don't believe you did this to me type of thing or how did you look nah, at that? Nah, not, I didn't look at it like that. I just looked at it like, like, I don't know how to say it. What you thinking? Just say what you thinking. Yeah, just say what you thinking. Uh, ain't no said, wrong okay, answer because right. it's, it's what you felt, so it ain't no wrong answer. I'm, I'm like, I look at it like, damn, this, this boy really nutty for getting locked up like that. Like, uh, like he know he had, like, kids and all that. And, like, he, like, I'm just, he knew he had kids in a way. And I don't know. Go ahead, man. Keep it real. I, I, I'm, I'm just trying. I'm trying to keep the most censored way possible. No, you ain't got to keep it censored. This ain't going to be on PBS. Just, just uh, go ahead. Well, however you feel, say it. So. All right. I'm saying, this boy, we a nut ass nigga for uh, getting locked up while having kids on the way. And now, now we ain't going to celebrate our birthdays with each other because me, me and Kaim, we really we, we going to be around each other like that because of the situation that he got locked up. And now we move far away. We, we only see, we used, we used to only see each other like once every five months. But now we're seeing each other more often now. But me and my brothers, we, we was always separated. I right, never so had a real brother with bond. So you took me where I was about to go. How did that affect the relationship with you and your brothers then? Like, we never like really had a real brotherly bond because of the situation. Like we 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 recently just got each other's numbers and all that. Well, me, me and my older brother, we always had each other. Now, so we live with each other. But me and my younger brother, Kaim, we just we just recently got each other numbers. We started hanging out more and all that. All right, so you would say that all happened once your dad came home or y'all was doing that like when he was still on his way? Like once he came home. All right. Yeah. Nah. Now, for, right, go ahead. You was about to say something? No, nah, it was Kamaj in the background. All right, Rock. Now you hearing yeah. that from him, and like he yeah. hesitant to say it because you was dead. He don't want to say that to his dad, but yeah. that's the reason we having this conversation. We wanted to be a little uncomfortable. This topic is uncomfortable, and this is not something yeah. that people really ever sit down and break this whole situation down. Yeah. So now you know that that was what he was feeling. I know you was feeling that about yourself because you sitting here and you looking at him go through pictures and you can't do it. You're not physically there. Yeah. How do that hit you though to hear that? Um, it's the reality. I mean, I, at the end of the day, like, I understand that my decisions hurt more than me. You know what I mean? And the ones that they hurt more than anybody is my kids. I understand that now. So my whole twist now is like, all right, I had to forgive myself. And I do think my kids forgive me. I definitely think Caduce forgive me. Cormage forgive me. My youngest son, we've been going through it a little bit. But, um... I'm glad that he able to express it more so than anything and understand that I'm accepted to him recept to I'm accepting to him expressing it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like the way like my dad always had, my dad got 13 kids. My dad was always there though. He wasn't ever locked up or nothing. So I was able to get those relationships with my kids and I kind of robbed them out of that by making the decisions that I made. So it's cool for them to feel like that. Like it's understandable for them to feel like that. And I'm just glad that, like, especially with Caduce, like that's what he want. 
he want that he want to spend time with his brothers. He want to spend time with his, you know what I mean? And for them, and then like me being home now, and it's like all right, little things that we do do together. We we try our best to be together. You know what I'm saying? Like my whole thing now since coming home is like all right. You know they say like your circle gets smaller. This, you know what I mean. My circle, I'm, I'm doing my best to have my circle is my family, my kids. You know what I mean. My girl, her kid, and, and just rock out like that instead of just chilling with this, chilling with him, chilling with him, chilling with him, chilling with him. And now I don't went through a week and he spend no time with my kids. So I, I try see, to spend time with my kids. See, that's where that's where I'm at in life now. Yeah. Is you can't make up for all that lost time and don't try to make up for all that lost time because you never all you're gonna do is defeat yourself. Because yeah. you can't make up for you can't make up for 16 years and three months. Like it ain't gonna happen. Yeah. But that's who, like I said, that's where I'm at is they gotta be influenced by somebody. And yeah. you only get but so much time with them. And you already done lost so much time that I can't just now be wasting time doing whatever with whoever. Like yeah. For me, like a big thing is my kids learn how to sit up. I bought them prayer rugs. Yeah. Like, cause that's a real big thing for me. So it's like yeah. when the down is called, my daughter goes, My mom, like, cause she knows what yeah. it is and she about to be to. Like, yeah. so it's a real big thing about the influence that you put on them, the example that you put in front of them and what you do in front of them. So now that you are there to give them that example. And like I said, you started the YouTube channel. We talked about that, that you was going to try to get it off the ground. It's already up uh, two episodes deep uh, with the Life Coach yeah. Rock situation. Now you're trying to show them something different and show them something positive and show them like that there is another way to go. Like daddy did something and he went the wrong way. But when you was making those decisions, it was only based off you. It wasn't based yeah. off of like, I got people, you know, I got mouths to feed or not even I got mouths to feed. I got people looking at my every move and all my decisions. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I kind of um like like I know like people it's hard for them to understand, you know what I'm saying? Because I had to go through so much to understand my actions and my thoughts throughout myself. So it's like what I my whole twist now is not even to get them to understand the reason why I made my decisions, more so to get them to understand what reason why I'm making my decisions just now. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. little things like we might do. And they, they, they complain, like, I might say we about to pray. It's like, ah, man, ooh, you know what I'm saying? Or we about to do this. Ah, uh, it, it's cool. I'm cool with that. Because at first it was like, I just want them to be accepted of me. But now it's just like, just respect me as, my, as your father. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to respect you as my son. I want you to be everything that you want to be. I'm going to support you. And I'm going to do it. everything I can to support you, I'm going to do. And I do feel like, I feel like Maj know that, I feel like Caduce know that, but at the end of the day, like, I don't know about if Kayeen really know that yet. I don't know, do, do you know that? Do you, do you feel like I'm here to support you or everything that you want to do? Yeah. You got to give me yeah, more. What? You got to give me more. Yeah. yeah, come on. What was that? Yeah. <laughs> no, we ain't accepting that. I mean... I'm upset. I mean, like, yeah, I feel like you support us on some things and some things that you can't support us on, like, like, uh, like when Kanye, like, you can't, you can't really support him on his homework because he, uh, it's already too late. It's like fourth term. But yeah. if he was home, if he was home, probably been able to support him and all that. Like, you start telling him, like, yeah, you gotta start reading books and all that because books help you with all the other stuff. Yeah. See, them small things, like you said, though, they look frivolous in the moment. When we yeah. was all 16, we ain't listening. Don't matter what your mom or your dad tell you. We just yeah. ain't listening because we think we got it all figured out. But yeah. just like you just said, my dad would pray in the middle of the floor. And you would be like, why is he grandstanding like he the only one that makes a lot? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the... Uh, once I get my own kids and realize, nah, he's doing this because he's showing you that no matter what it is that you're doing, there's nothing more important than this time that it takes for you to make this a lot. Yeah. He's showing you like the different things that they, the different things that you do as a parent, it like lays the groundwork for the later, later on for your kids. In the moment, yeah, they're going to go, come on, this ball. But it's going <laughs> to make sense in 10 years. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
you going to think about it and be like, damn, my dad did used to say that. He did used to do that. And now I know why he did or said that. Yeah. Um, now, this one I want to throw at, I'm going to throw this at both of y'all, but you kind of already know what the answer is going to be from you, Rock. Deuce, when you looking at the pictures from your dad, because, like, you ain't seeing him every day, and if you don't see anybody every day, and you see a picture, and now it's six months later, it's eight months later, you got to look at your dad develop and change through the pictures. How does that make you feel? Because, like, for him, he's going, like, damn, he was just, he now he know how to walk. Now he went from crawling and, like, now he's getting a little taller. When you're looking at him and you're going like, damn, he didn't got skinny or damn, he getting husky. He got a whole beard now. Like, how do that, how do looking at the pictures and watching your dad develop, what did you think about that? Because the pictures is huge for the person that's in jail. I don't really know how to, like, I don't really know how to say it because uh, I barely got a chance to look at any pictures. Like, I got to look at the pictures like every, every three years. And uh, whenever I look at a picture, I'm like, yo, he really getting old. Like, <laughs> like he really getting old in that joint. Like, last time I seen him, he even had no gray hair. But now he got a full gray beard and all that. When you looked at those pictures, though, all right, so you saying even then, that's even, that's even kind of better for what I'm asking then. Because if you're looking at it in this every couple of years, then did that make you appreciate them pictures even more? Because I know, like I said, we talked about this on part one for him. Getting them pictures, man, it puts you in a whole nother space. And, like, these pictures is going to change my whole week. Because now I'm going to just stare at these drones and get lost in them. Is that the same thing? For, was it the same thing for you or was it different for you? It, it was, like, kind of the same thing. Because every time, like, I look at a picture, I realize, like, we're getting closer and closer, closer to getting out. Copy that. So, how did you feel like I was ever coming out? Did you feel like, man, this ain't coming out? Wait, I, like, sometimes when you told us you was getting out and you ain't actually come out, like, yo, you might not actually come out. <laughs> but then after a while, I was like, maybe, like, maybe, uh, maybe got like a couple, like, a couple more years. And then when you told us, like, like a couple, it was like a couple months ago. Yeah. You, you told us you was getting out, I was like, yeah, you probably actually getting out this time. Because I started actually believing this time. Because, like, yeah, because Pop Pop when you start coming, yes, you try to tell us, you say, yeah, you try call, you try calling less and all that. All right, so before we switch it up, um, Deuce, I definitely appreciate you coming on and talk about this. But that first time you saw your dad when he got out, what did you think or what was you feeling like? Was it just damn, he old now? The first time I saw him, I was uh, I was kind of like happy or something like that. Like, I was kind of like happy then. <laughs> I was kind of like happy, like, because, like, yo, you really out. And we, we ain't kind of even just laughing in the car. We were making jokes, like, yo, but we, we were like, he really out. I was like happy and all that. I was like, he did get old. I, I thought he was going to be like taller than, like, I ain't seen him in like a couple of years. I thought he was going to be taller than that, though. <laughs> yeah, same size as mine. All right, so damn. Um, the last joint that I'm gonna ask you on that is, did you feel like now, like, all right, now that he's home, like, I got some questions that he can answer, some problems that, like, that he can solve, some stuff that like I just couldn't do while he was in there. And what's at least one of those things? Uh, what you say? I, I was, I was talking to my. I said, now that now that you you see home, you see walking up. And you got some questions that it's like now he can answer this question and now I got this problem that he can solve. What's at least one of those things that was like I needed you here to do what? Like, like, like do you think we would, me and Kaim would be like, like get better at basketball and like, uh, like you know, pop up guys in the league come on. You think you could be able to train us and all that? Oh yeah. So that's what you want to do for the for the league. Yeah, I was lucky to play. All right, yeah, then. I'm glad you asked because you ain't really say nothing to me about it. I think... Um, you want to get that left hand together. That's what you're trying to tell you. <laughs> yeah, so that's yeah, what we I work on. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we want. That's what we work on then. Started it this week. Copy that. Today, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, shit, sure, we copy that. You, yeah, we could have started it today, for real, for real. Today ain't In no the backyard. Visit, right? 
They ain't over as early. Get out there. Jason Tatum. Yeah, he gotta get down working. here. He Jason Tatum down. worked on his situation. He the first couple months that he was working with his boy, he didn't even play with a ball. That's how his footwork got to be like that. Um, all right, now let's switch it up. Rock, you started the YouTube channel. What's the response we've been getting from uh the YouTube channel off the first two episodes? Um, like I was saying the other day, I feel like the first response was good. I don't know what was lacking in the second response. Maybe the um <laughs> I mean, sometimes it'd be about the um, the times you launch it, you know what I mean? The engagement or the promotion with it. But I think for the most part, what I'm doing now with it is I'm stopped focusing on like the response of others more so than the response of my kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's my goal? I had to check myself and ask myself, what's my goal for the channel? My goal for the channel really was to experience things with my sons, to document it and to help others experience the same thing with their kids, you know what I mean? And have my kids learn about me while I learn about them because it's certain things that we do, like for instance, that whole joint with me cooking or whatever. I don't know if they understood what I was doing until I put the channel out, until I explained what I was doing throughout. Because when they got in the car, they was like, yo, why you record? <laughs> yeah, but they gonna do that. You feel what I'm saying? They're going to do that. I ain't really tripping about that. But it's like little things that I want to do. Like, like for instance, like when I get off a of house arrest and everything, it's going to be things like I want to go, I want us to go fishing. You know what I mean? I want to document that. I want us to go to like Dony Park, Six Flags. I want us to go down south to visit my folks down south. Things like that. You feel what I'm saying? I want us to, to, to travel, like go to, go to basketball games and go to college campuses and just you know, go out and do things together. Get you know some what I'm experiences saying? and some stories. Yeah. The and, car, and just, the car is ride it? is the car ride is the important part in them situations because that's the part that you're gonna remember. Like exactly. that's the part where all of the where the conversations about well why this and why that and how come I do this and why is this and that. That's when all of that come out is the ride. Yeah, you're gonna have yeah. fun once you get to the water park or whatever. Once we get to the destination, but it's the ride is the part that you need. And and those and I got be trying to tell them like we had this conversation me uh, and the kids about basically why I want to do it and they want to be private and things like that. But what I learned too is memories is sacred. You feel what I'm saying? And the reality is that everybody's not gonna be here forever. No one's gonna be here forever. So ain't no telling which one of us is going to leave each other first in whatever fashion or form we leave each other. But we're not going to have this forever. We not we we only had it now for a little over two months. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So let's cherish it. Let's let's like not bullshit with it because we understand how valuable it is. Like for me and Deuce to be able to, like last night we was on the text. I'm going through old pictures, sending me old pictures. He's sending me old pictures. You know what I mean? I'm sending him pictures when I was his age and things like that. And we commenting on these things or, you know what I mean? Or like my, she, he catch a flat, able to call me, able to go up there and help him fix the flat. Or, you know what I mean? I go to his school, talk to his teachers. These things are not like, we can't take these things for granted. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm not taking it for granted. So the, the at the thing same about token, them too, yeah. go ahead, go ahead, finish what you're saying. Yeah. At the same token, I don't want them to feel like all our experiences are documented just for others to be a part of. So it's a balance there. You know what I'm saying? It's like, no, I'm just not teaching you how to work on your left hand so we could put it on the ground. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's, it's, it, it's a balance that needs to be walked too at the same token. It's the same thing like we were just talking about how some of those things make sense years later. Uh, like yeah. you just said, people be people always be scary about having those conversations about death, but like somebody gonna be gone. I got married yeah. six years. I got married six years ago. Three of my groomsmen is dead at my wedding. So yeah. I was saying then like forget the pictures. I want the video. The video yeah. gets us to moving around and you get to see all of that and still relive yeah. over that. A picture yeah. is just a snapshot of the moment that we was in. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, you kind of do have to have a balance of let's not always. This is one of my things that I always like go out to play when you're out at places. It's like I don't want to look at we at the game. I don't want to look at the game through my phone. 
I want to look yeah. at the game with my eyes. I don't want to look at all of our conversations and interactions through the phone. I want to physically be here in the moment because it's a thing to be present and it's a thing to be there. Yeah. And that's one of those things that I always, that I'm like still trying to balance out where I'm out running around with my wife and my kids and it's like, but you got your face buried in the phone. So are you really even here? You present, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. but you're not here. So yeah. it's one of them things where, yeah, it's a tricky balance. And uh, another thing from watching the, uh, <laughs> Watching the joint. Why you ain't like? What was wrong with the eggs? Was the eggs boiled? Was them joints scrambled? Because them eggs look thick as hell on the uh, on them sandwiches. They were scrambled. They were scrambled. Cheese joints. Nasty. I'm about to say, dudes wasn't filling them eggs on the joint. <laughs> Nobody was filling them eggs. We ate them though. We ate them. <laughs> the bread was soggy. Then they oh. grinding you about you ain't toasted bread and all of that. I right, cut my man. Yeah, but it's cool. <laughs> I ain't tripping about it though. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't tripping about it because at the end of the day, it was just me. Like, look, and I be trying to let them know honestly too is you ain't got to spend money every time you want something to eat. You feel what I'm saying? It's like a lot of that is like you know materialistic things. Like we feel like you got to spend money to get this or get that. Like. The only way you get money is not spending money. That's what I'm trying to tell these fools. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to spend spend money and, and get money. Like, they don't work together. You know what I'm saying? So it was like... Nah, yeah, you, then you hustling the, backwards. Yeah. Yeah, we got the... You know what I mean? Like, buckle down on the things that we spend on because we trying to build something at the, at the end of the day, too. And the whole situation, though, there is it's about the time. It's not yeah. about the money. It's about the time. The time is valuable. It's invaluable. Like, man, when you realize that you have no more time with somebody or like y'all situation where we had so much time that we didn't get together and when all you wanted was time, don't lose sight of that. I just talking to my brother on my way here, coming from uh, H2H, well, coming from a cleaning job. <laughs> um, and he was like, yeah, man, my spot is on the third floor. I got to walk up all these steps to get there. I said, it's better than walking up tier one, tier two to get to your joint. So yeah. don't never lose sight of the fact that, you know what I'm saying, we now have the time to spend this time together. We can now complain about, you know what I'm saying, why we buying Wendy's three days in a row, you know what I'm saying, versus I ain't got to talk to you the last three days because you couldn't get on the phone. Yeah. Y'all got 23 to one or somebody tested positive and now they shut down your whole block or your whole situation. So yeah. uh, before we close it out, uh, Rock, throw your handle out there again. Let them know where to follow you at, and when we dropping on, uh, when we dropping on, uh, oh, damn, uh, when we dropping the YouTube's every week. My bad. Yeah, the YouTube's. Um, as of now, I'm doing Wednesday nights. Um, Wednesday nights around eight o'clock p.m. Um, uh, dropping them. Um, on that's on Welcome Home Rock on YouTube. Uh, Welcome Home Rock. Welcome Home ROC. It's basically about the um, me coming back into society, reestablishing a relationship with my kids, my family, and life within itself. And um, I am um, Coach underscore Rock on IG. That's like the main page. I am um, C O A C H R O C. I am um, underscore C O A C H R O C on IG. I am um, underscore Coach Rock. Do you yeah. throw your handle out there? Uh, Instagram <laughs> at Q U D D U C E X is a black Instagram profile picture. You'll see it. All right, copy that, y'all. That was episode 65, Both Sides of the Wall, part two. We're not done with both sides of the wall, though, y'all. That's episode 65. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. <laughs>